at Pike River Mine. I call the Honourable Minister Chris Finlayson. That was a very disappointing speech from Darian Fenton. Yesterday, I thought the Leader of the Opposition quite correctly stood up and said Labor would accept its share of responsibility, and I applauded him for that. But by, within 24 hours, we had a nasty and unpleasant speech from Darian Fenton that really lets the side down. There are major issues that need to be addressed, major issues that need to be addressed, and I've already said on a number of occasions that this government is utterly committed to addressing them. Because last week the report came out, and yesterday Mr Brownlee and I went down to Greymouth to present the findings of the Royal Commission's report to the families. And I want to refer to what the Royal Commission uh, said about those families uh, at page 27 of volume 1. The loss of 29 lives at Pike River exacted an enormous toll on the men's families, friends and colleagues. Many family members attended the Commission's hearings, a number provided written witness statements and some provided heartbreaking oral evidence to the Commission. The Commission was impressed by their fortitude and courage and it's fair to say on behalf of Mr Brownlee that we certainly saw that yesterday. They are very, very fine people and what they had to deal with yesterday as the, report, the report's findings were read out to them was not pleasant. Let me make it perfectly clear, as the Prime Minister has made it clear, that there were 16 recommendations in the report and as has been said, all of them are going to be followed. There is an issue as to structure in relation to whether or not we have a Crown agency or, or a Crown entity, but in many respects that's a technical matter. The substance uh, of the recommendation uh, is to be accepted, and yesterday Cabinet met and agreed uh, to the intent of those recommendations uh, and said that they would be progressed urgently, and as I said to the families yesterday afternoon, I gave them my categorical assurance that uh, everything that needed to be done would be completed by the end of 2013. There are a number of findings in the report. I don't intend to go through them in detail. Some of them make uh, profoundly sad and unpleasant reading. They contain significant criticism of both directors and the executive management of the company and of government regulators. Directors are criticised for failing to ensure health and safety was being properly managed, and executive managers are criticised for not properly assessing the health and safety risks that the workers were facing. And as I said to the families yesterday, and I say it in this House this afternoon, there's been some comment in the last few days about whether or not we should look at the offence of corporate manslaughter in New Zealand. Uh, a change would enable prosecution of companies and organisations when serious management failures result in death, and that issue is going to be looked at. The task force will be looking at, uh, at that issue. There are precedents from the United Kingdom in 2008, uh, and if we need to go down that path, we will indeed. Let me say something, given Darian Fenton's uh, uh, claims about the, the 1992 legislation, it's important to bear in mind just exactly what the Commission said under the heading in Volume 1, page 32, legislative change required. It said, and I quote, the Health and Safety and Employment Act remains generally fit for purpose. The Commission has identified a few changes, although the suggested expert task force may well identify more. Two areas in the Act require early attention. And the first, and I responded to it in answer to one of her uh, more coherent questions in question time today, uh, was worker participation, including contractors. They said that the legislation on worker participation should be strengthened and it said workers sometimes don't understand health and safety rules or ignore them to get the job done. They should be entitled to receive key information on health and safety risks without having to ask for it and that's exactly that's something I totally agree with and as I said I'll be looking forward to working with both employers and unions to ensure that uh, any necessary changes are made. The second issue which I 
I've also highlighted in answers to questions this afternoon, concerns the duties of directors. And again, the report says that this is the second area uh, that requires early legislative attention, that dealing with governance by the board of directors. They should see health and safety risks as their concern and should give them the same careful attention they apply to other risks facing the company. There are various ways in which those reforms could be enacted, either through the Companies Act generally or through the 1992 legislation, but I give my assurance to the House that those matters are going to be looked at as a matter of urgency. And the third area I might just touch on, the Commission's recommended that the penalty regime be reviewed to ensure health and safety obligations are taken seriously. Again, I totally agree with that, and we're looking at that as a matter of urgency. So in terms of the 1992 legislation, generally fit for purpose, but requiring some urgent remedial legislative attention, and that is going to happen. The government will be acting on these matters and will be inviting the independent task force to re review those matters to ensure that there is a strong health and safety focus in governance. It's beyond any question I would have thought, having read some of the material in this report that New Zealand's record in this area is simply unacceptable. On regulatory change, the government accepts that there were systemic failures in the regulatory regime across successive governments. We could stand here and adopt the old U2 approach and point the finger, but where does that get the families of the 29 men? Where does that get health and safety in New Zealand? It is the responsibility of all of us to address these issues and not get into it happened under your watch, it happened under your watch kind of routine. I think that is demeaning and insulting to those poor men. The Royal Commission also found there's no predictable period following an explosion when a gassy ma mine may be safely entered before a second explosion. Importantly, it rejected criticism that rec rescuers did not go into the mine during the so-called window of opportunity. And I was very pleased to read the Commission's very helpful report uh, on uh, the issues of body recovery. I've said to the family, uh, when Mr Brownlee and I were meeting them yesterday, they want someone they know they can engage with on these issues, they, as it were, a point person uh, within the bureaucracy so that they're not having to deal with layers and layers of bureaucracy in dealing with these matters, uh, and I've undertaken to get back to them within 14 days uh, naming such a person. So I am very keen to see what I can do uh, during my tenure holding this portfolio uh, to address these issues. I'm not particularly interested, Mr Speaker, in pointing the finger of blame across the chamber uh, at three former Ministers of Labour who were in power for nine years. I think that that's pretty childish and immature. I want to get on with the important task of addressing these issues to honour the memory of those 29 uh, men who died so sadly. I also, in closing, sir, want to place on record uh, my uh, acknowledgement not only of, their, of, of the families but also of Nick Davidson, their lawyer, and their tireless advocacy on their behalf and also thank the commissioners for their tremendous work. Uh, it is, I think, um, a very powerful report. It's uh, a call to uh, this government and to all of us that we need to get on with these issues immediately. There is, uh, as I said to the families, uh, a real determination on the part of this government to address these issues. And as I say, they're a mixture of legislative and regulatory, uh, and we are going to get on with these straight away, uh, and I look forward to the cooperation of uh, other parties uh, in this House. I want to finish by reading the words of the Commissioners with, with which the Government is in complete agreement. The lessons from the Pike River tragedy must not be forgotten. New Zealand needs to take urgent legislative, structural and attitudinal changes if future tragedies are to be avoided. Government, industry and the workers need to work together. That would be the best way to show respect for the 29 men who never returned home on 19 November 2010, 
uh, and for their loved ones. I call the Honourable Member, Kevin...